Well, hello everyone. It's Janet Perez with the Painted Saguaro coming to you with Paint Couture as one of their content creators to show you how I created this darling little wash stand that I've converted into a really cute statement piece for your home. It's a uh, it needed a lot of work, let me just tell you. The top was warped and it had huge splits in it. The front cabinet doors were completely split and destroyed. So I removed those and I'm going to show you how I've given this whole piece a new life. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. First off, I started off by washing this entire piece with Fresh Start, which is a fantastic product from Paint Couture. It's a powdered product that you mix with water. What I like to do is mix it into a spray bottle, spray it on, clean it off with a rag or some paper towels, and then rinse the piece with vinegar and water and start painting. So here I am painting and I am using Admiral Blue, which is one of the beautiful new chalk style paint colors by Paint Couture. And I'm just going around that outside edge of the drawers and the frame with this color. Next, I've grabbed Angel Eyes, which is a lighter blue, also a chalk style paint. And I'm going through the center of the drawers with that color to give it sort of a highlight. I'm using a chippy brush. As you know, that's my favorite brush, my go-to for most almost everything that I do. And I'm using the uh, Paint Couture mister bottle uh, to make sure that my paint stays moist not drippy or wet but just moist if you start feeling your paint drag you want to spritz it that white color that i'm using is actually called buttercream and it's another chalk style paint by paint couture now you can see i'm using several different brush strokes here i'm using a dabbing motion i'm using a brush stroke i'm using um uh, stippling motion and you just want to keep working the paint until it gets to the point where you're happy with it and I tell you this all the time blending there's no real secret to it it's just working the paint until you get it to where you're happy with it here I've slowed the process down so you can see that I'm just using simple very light-handed strokes to blend those paint edges in so that they become seamless and that the paint just blends together beautifully. And this paint product really does blend so seamlessly when you get it where you want it to be. So I'm adding very little paint when I do add some paint here and I'm barely touching the canvas or the wood. Um, and it's just a very simple process here at this point. Very light sweeping motions here. Misting very lightly when I need to. And here I'm using some circular motions because I want to just get that blend going a little heavier over on that side. I'm adding more white in the center because I realized that I want it a little bit brighter in the center. And there I'm using a Klingon brush. That's my S50 Klingon brush, which I've had a really long time. And it's a nice, the S stands for shorty. It's got a short handle, so it helps you get into tight spots, which is one of my secrets for getting into under cabinets and things like that. So I'm just dipping into the different colors, the three different colors that I've got there, using that mister if I start to feel the paint drag and working that blend in until I feel that it's right. And you can see it's starting to really come together nicely. And you guys, blending is all about just continuously working the product and the paint, keeping it wet, not too wet, keeping it so that your brush isn't pulling until it gets to where you want it. And this is there right now. So it's there and I'm done. So this is anagalypta paper. 
And this is the wallpaper that I used to line the drawers and also to put on that bottom shelf where I had removed the cabinet doors. I painted it with Paint Couture's uh, Night Sky chalk paint, and then I dry brushed over it with that same Admiral Blue and uh, adhered it with the decoupage medium in matte. And this is the transfer that I used from uh, Prima, and it's called um, Exotic Borders. And I just used a couple of the strips from it. If you have never applied a transfer, there is a couple of different companies out there that make them that all of us as furniture artists use. And you want to make sure you follow their instructions when you're applying the transfers because one of the companies recommends that you seal the piece before you apply the transfer. The other company recommends that you do not seal the piece before the transfer. I believe that um, IOD recommends that you do not seal the piece and Prima recommends that you do seal the piece. So I did seal the piece first before applying these transfers and I sealed it with the Paint Couture dead flat um, top coat before applying these transfers. So just make sure that you read the instructions before you ever apply any transfers to your furniture because they're too expensive to um, have them waste, okay? So <laughs> just so you know that, I don't ever want you to have to have a an oops that's that expensive. So this is just a really quick demo on how to apply them. Um, when you're doing a straight one like this, you really want to make sure that a straight line like this, you really want to make sure that you get it on super straight because you don't want it looking wonky once you get it on. Um, so I made sure that they lined up really, really straight. I actually had a level um, to make sure that pattern was on that drawer super straight. And I'm using a transfer tool here, but they also give you a stick to help you apply them as well. And you can purchase all of these things on the All Paint Products page that um, we have a link to as well. So you can see I added some additional transfers here. So now I'm using the um, Paint Couture paint color Driftwood, which is one of my favorite new colors. It's also a chalk style paint. And I'm doing a paint wash because these transfers looked way too new on this piece. And I wanted it to look aged and old. And I love doing paint washes over transfers. It just helps them kind of seem more a part of the furniture instead of put on the furniture over the paint. And what I'm doing here is I'm just dabbing the paint on and then spritzing it lightly. First, I'm using just the uh, Mr. Bottle, but I also have, and you'll see it on occasion, I'll pick it up. Um, I have a bottle that has 50% water and 50% white vinegar in it. And that will be the bottle that has the yellow head and the blue nozzle. And you'll see me use that. It's got a stronger spray to it. And it just creates, when you're using the vinegar water, it creates a little bit of a different texture to the wash when it's, when it's running off. Um, so you can kind of play with it and experiment with it, but I'm using both here. And side note, I sealed the transfers before I started putting the water over them. So I used another coat of the dead flat top coat before I started doing the paint wash over this. So it's already got two coats of seal top coat on this piece. Just make sure that you know that. Um, because I don't want to um, reactivate or accidentally rub off any of the transfer when I'm doing this process. So this is kind of a, it seems kind of counterproductive because I'm painting the wash on and then I'm blotting most of it off and then I'm repainting it. But you'll see it just kind of layers the wash on in, in multiple layers. And it really does create a really cool effect when you're doing this. So you can see that spray was a stronger spray and that was a vinegar water spray. And um, I get more drips, but, um, and I, 
blot those drips back because I don't want drips on this. It's a very controlled chaos is what I like to consider this to be. Um, I know exactly where I want that wash to go and I'm controlling exactly where that paint is going. And I like to use paper towels. I like to use those blue shop towels. They're extremely absorbent. Um, if you use house paper towels, a lot of them have a pattern to them. And sometimes that pattern will come across on your uh, piece of furniture and it looks a little odd sometimes. So I try not to use those unless I'm out of the blue paper towels. Plus you kind of blow through those house paper towels a little more frequently. They're less absorbent than the shop paper towels. So I just like to pick those up when I go to your big box store when you get a chance. So I'm doing the same thing to the other side. And you can see where it kind of pulls up, pools up at the bottom of the drawers. So I, I like to kind of make sure that I get that absorbed up and don't let it pool too bad. That's hard. I want to make sure you understand I'm saying pool, P-O-O-L, not pool, pool like... I'm pulling, um, and I just want it to look natural and aged and worn and faded, and that's the look I'm going for here. So it's kind of a fun process to go through. I like that kind of boho look. Um, boho doesn't necessarily mean lots of bright colors. That's more, more hippie than boho, in my opinion. Um, you know, being a child who I was a child in the 60s, pretty young child, but I was a child of the 60s, um, you know, tie-dyes and things like that, that's hippie. Bohemian was actually a lot more natural colors and natural tones and plants and to me, that's more bohemian, um, more natural, and deep jewel tones and, and uh, wood tones and things like that. So this piece to me is very bohemian. So I'm trying to give it sort of a, a drippy look here where it looks like maybe whatever create that created that oxidization um, kind of dripped down the center of it, and we're almost done here. What are you guys thinking so far? Are you liking this look? I'm loving it. I, I really, um, you know, like I said, this piece sat in my studio. I really seriously thought about hauling this piece out curbside because I really didn't think there was much hope for it. I had probably 40 different transfer tubes stacked on it for years. The top was shot. So here is a little secret. I went down to Home Depot and I said, I need um, some cedar cut into 30 inch lengths. Did you know that Home Depot can cut wood for you at any length that you want? They also, I go down there quite frequently and have them cut me um, drawer bottoms because they, have, they can cut panels too. Um, so I got all of this wood. I had, I had to get that one little, uh, one and a half inch width because the four inch width boards are actually only three and a half inch. Otherwise I would have had enough, but I got the one 12 foot board for, I think $8 in cedar. And then the, th the one inch board was, I want to say $8. So I got a new top for about $20. They cut it for free. I used my husband's nail gun and boom, I have a new top. Now, this is the Paint Couture hemp oil. And it's all I needed in order to seal this piece. Um, I love hemp oil on raw wood. It is the best product you can put on raw wood. This is the back of the dresser. It was dry as heck. Um, probably never has had a finish on it in 80 years. And it just soaked this hemp oil up like crazy. And it looked so beautiful when it was done. So what you want to do is you want to apply this hemp oil. You want it, so want it to soak in for about 30 minutes. And once it's soaked in for 30 minutes, 
you can rub it off and you don't need to buff it, you don't need to polish it, you don't need to do anything other than just wipe off the excess and that's it, it's done. And that finish is rock hard, it's velvety smooth, it's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Isn't that cedar top just beautiful? I love it. What do you guys think? I am so pleased with how that turned out. And that's the first time I've used my husband's nail gun. So, you know, I mean, hey, I'm a carpenter. So I'd love to hear what you think. Do you like this piece? Those are not the baskets that I intended for this piece, but Amazon let me down and didn't get them delivered in time. But there's that top and there's that wash. Let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and please subscribe. Thanks for joining me and have a great day. Peace out.